come see us. Uh, my name is Paul Cox. I'm the chair of the American Public Law Commission. And I'll be moderating. Uh, you will have 10 minutes to present your veterans focus platform and another 10 minutes to answer four questions that have been uh, collected by the Veterans Affairs Commission uh, based on uh, the state of American veterans that was done last year by the University of Southern California. Um, and, um, and then there's a little buffer to follow. Uh, Timekeeper's been assigned. Dave is sitting here in front of you. We'll give you the five minute, three minute, two minute, and thirty second morning. And uh, they will. So, do you have any questions before we proceed? Okay. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself. If it's okay, I'm just going to stand here so I can be closer to the audience. Um, thank you so much for hosting all of the mayoral candidates here today. Um, it's really an honor to be with our veterans here in San Francisco. Thank you so much for your service um, to our country. Um, we all depend so much on your leadership, your dedication, and the work that you do both here in our country and abroad. So thank you very much. Um, I have been, I have had also the honor of serving um, our city and county a little over the last decade. I started out on the San Francisco Board of Education and now serve on the Board of Supervisors. I represent a very dynamic and challenging district which includes the South Market, Tenderloin, Treasure Island, and Mission Bay. I represent the poorest residents of San Francisco and as of three years ago I represent the wealthiest of code as well. Almost every single adult homeless shelter is also in the district I represent, and almost every single tech company you've heard of is in the district that I represent. Close to 80% of all of San Francisco's residential and commercial development is also happening in the district that I represent. And so I spent quite a bit of time um, working on issues around housing and land use and helping to shape the future of San Francisco neighborhoods. I'm proud to have led the initiative to make San Francisco the only city in the nation to make community college free again for all of our residents via Proposition W. I'm also proud to have fought for, negotiated, and won more affordable and middle income housing than any other member of the Board of Supervisors over the last eight years. And I've also been the author of the Tenant Protection Ordinance in 2015, after which we haven't seen a drop in low fault evictions um, throughout our city here in San Francisco. I'm also the district where source to flat Plowshare um, is a resident, and I'm proud to have worked with them on several um, homeless uh, and veteran housing here in our city on Treasure Island at 150 Otis. Um, I am absolutely committed to continuing Mayor Ed Lee's promise to get to zero on veteran homelessness. Homelessness is a crisis that um, exists here in our city, but not just in San Francisco, in cities across the nation. And it's something that began to emerge in the 1980s when we began to cut funding to HUD. In fact, prior to that, HUD's budget used to be larger than the Department of Defense, and we used to have more public housing units than people on the wait list. We absolutely need to invest in subsidized housing, and having worked with market rate developers the last eight years, I get why. Um, housing, market rate housing simply does not pencil out for the poor, the working class, and now in San Francisco, even the middle class um, needs to be subsidized to be able to stay here in San Francisco. I do believe that one of the most urgent questions, press, uh, press, one of the most urgent questions pressing San Francisco today is who gets to live here? Who gets to live in this great city with our progressive laws um, and our programs and policies? And we have to ensure that San Francisco is a city um, for all of us. Um, I did just want to go straight to Q&A, um, and also, I, I don't know if you take questions from the audience as well. Uh, we weren't planning on it, no, we have four, these four structured questions, okay, got it. and we can go, if you're ready yeah. for that, rock and roll. So the first question, you just talked about homelessness, uh, so let me give you a little run here. Over 40% of the post-9-11 veterans, that is the younger veterans, and 20% of the pre-9-11 veterans, those are mostly Vietnam era, shortly after, have reported being homeless in the past years. On one hand, uh, the San Francisco Department of Homelessness and Supported Housing has reported significant difficulties between the landlords to take the cut back adoption. On the other hand, many veterans have unstable, that have unstable living arrangements do not meet the Department of Housing and definition of homelessness. And single room occupancy housing is just not appropriate for especially for our older veterans uh, who need rapid health services. As mayor, what do you intend to do? to make sure all veterans are appropriately housed. So um, we focus a lot on the roughly 7,000 people that are in our homeless count. This is a rough estimate of the number of people who sleep on our streets or 
of our shelters on any given night. But our homeless count is far larger. It's closer to 20,000 unique individuals that interface with our homeless support services system on any given year, which means that not everyone that is homeless sleeps on the streets every single night. Um, people couch surf, they sleep in cars, sleep on the streets some nights, not on other nights, um, when they're able to scrounge up money for a hotel. Um, and then, of that 20,000, there's a roughly 3,000 that we estimate that are chronically homeless, that are living on our streets every single night, that are likely also struggling with mental health illnesses and substance abuse, what we call the triple diagnosis. For this group of folks, we know that homelessness is also a public health crisis, and we must address it as such. It is not just a poverty and economic issue. We must build more medical shelter beds staffed by nurses, clinicians, and psychologists, I'm proud to have expanded our first medical shelter on Mission Street between 7th and 8th. Um, that is staffed by the Department of Public Health. We're actually able to treat people who are sick on our streets, and we have to greatly expand this program. It's unfortunately very expensive, which is why the city has been reluctant to do it, because it doesn't always feel like the most cost-effective way to, treat, uh, to, uh, to address street homelessness. However, um, while we wait for housing, we have to simply get people off the streets. Now, specifically for veterans who have access to HUD bash vouchers, um, which is an amazing resource, um, we have to get them to housing. Um, one of the things that I would like to propose is creating a type of closed um, circuit universe, um, putting together, pairing veterans and landlords together. I think some of the hesitation from landlords is making sure that they're taking in a tenant um, that I guess isn't going to cause issues or problems for them in the long term. And um, there are systems that we've seen in other countries. In Korea, for example, they have a closed system where they vet applicants, both landlords and tenants, um, largely students and recent graduates of college, um, to actually rent from seniors um, who have an extra room in their house. And so I think that we can create a similar type of system where we interview and vet both landlords and veterans looking for housing and try to create a better relationship of trust because one of the biggest issues that I hear from landlords is uh, is a fear of I think kind of just going out there and just taking um, anyone in and we have to provide a positive experience and some some sort of stability um, that we can provide both to the veteran tenant and to the landlord as well. Um, in the long term, we simply must build more affordable and middle income housing. And as I said, when this country was in the business of building housing, homelessness was not a crisis on our streets. It really began to emerge in the 1980s when we began cutting funding to HUD. And we cut HUD's funding by 50% between 1980 and 2002. And there's a great graph, you can look it up online, as we stopped subsidizing the production of housing in Section 8, homelessness began to emerge as a crisis on our streets. I'm also supporting a $300 million gross receipts measure for the November ballot. It is a tax on companies that make $50 million or more. This $300 million dollars will go towards building supportive housing, behavioral health treatment, substance abuse, and other types of affordable housing here in San Francisco. And let me tell you why this is so significant. Our current budget for homelessness is roughly about $250 million a year. 60% of which actually houses people, 10,000 people that you no longer see on our streets today. This would double our budget. And the last time San Francisco uh, voted on new revenue for affordable housing, it was a $310 million bond in 2015 that is going to be spent over the course of a decade. So it will be $300 million every single year. And we're going to be able to finally provide people not just housing, but the supportive services that they need to get back on their feet. veterans have considered suicide or have made plans in their life by suicide. 53% of post-9-11 veterans scream positive for PTSD. 64% scream positive for depression. Pre-9-11 veterans have PTSD at rates of 41% uh, and, uh, and depression over five. So these are significant numbers. Post-9-11 veterans are twice as likely as pre-9-11 veterans to engage in high risk of taking behaviors like driving after drinking alcohol carrying a weapon or looking to start fighting. Nearly 60% of post-9-11 veterans have a probable alcohol and drinking problem. 50% of our veterans have reported a significant physical or mental health issue for which they are not receiving care. These numbers tell me that we are facing an unprecedented crisis in mental health issues and a wave of second-tier effects affecting families, co-workers, and friends of veterans in our community. As mayor, what will you do to improve mental health services? 
Um, I think this is uh, another um, pressing issue that we as a nation have not been dealt by dealing with. And it's not just for those that are in dignity um, or in poverty. Um, we frankly don't address mental health at any class. In fact, I was talking with the new uh, director of psychiatry at UCSF who had come to my office to talk about a capital campaign that UCSF was beginning to build a psychiatric hospital in Mission Bay, Dog Patch. And um, this is just for their members. This wasn't even to serve folks that are out of network. And he was telling me that they were having trouble fundraising because while everyone wants their name on the Women and Children's Hospital, the Cancer Hospital, no one was as excited to have their name on the psychiatric hospital. So we have a lot of work to do in this country. I know it's humorous and it's not humorous at the same time. We have a lot of work to do to reduce stigma around mental health. Um, I have a very um, close friend of my family who's struggling with mental health illness and it is so hard on his parents. And you know, I, I one of the reasons why it is so important to me to serve all of our residents, including our residents in Tenderloin, is that I see my family member and he wasn't able to get this literal persistent support and tenacious support that he would also be in our single room occupants and hotels or in our single adult homeless shelters. And I know that our veterans experience at a much higher rate, which is why I want to thank you so much for what you do, because you literally put your bodies and your hearts on the line when you serve our country. And what you see and experience is indescribable, I think, for so many of us. And having friends that have served, having worked with people that have served, and have disappeared for periods of time when they seem perfectly normal on those days, just goes to show how difficult this experience is. We must invest, invest in behavioral health and mental health services, and we have to take away the stigma in getting help. Um, it is expensive. It is why our country probably doesn't invest in it as much as it should, but we simply have to because if we don't address it, um, what we see on our streets today is just going to continue to explode, not just the mental health, but the substance abuse that follows along with it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the third question is on employment. Veterans face a disproportionately high rate of unemployment and underemployment in San Francisco. 80% of service members leaving the military leave the military without a job, and almost 60% of post-9-11 veterans in San Francisco reported that their military skills and experiences are dismissed by their employers or potential employers. As a result, 83% of post-9-11 veterans who work full-time have an annual salary that is below $60,000. And veterans who work full-time have an annual salary that is below $60,000 a year. And 40% of veterans with jobs reported earning below $36,000. That's like dinner. Um, it is, that is simply not enough to survive, much less live a day of my life in this bourgeois town. As mayor, what will you do to make sure veterans find appropriate employment in San Francisco? So we don't do a very good job with employment training really anywhere um, here in our city. Um, we have to really beef up our employment training programs and also our programs at City College. Um, there are jobs also that, but let me backtrack a little bit, we know the future of work is also changing with technology, automation, algorithms, and that many of the jobs that exist today that are often solid blue-collar, middle-class jobs are going to go away. But new jobs will also be created um, via these arenas. But there are certain areas, um, like continuum of care, early childhood education, healthcare, IHSS workers, which are simply poverty jobs that we need to invest in to make middle-class jobs as well. Um, I want to work with our Veterans Commission on figuring out how we can do a better job of training our um, veteran um, employee and, and also working with employers to hire them. We have a huge tech industry um, here that is the fastest growing engine of our economy here today. And we need to simply prepare our veterans who are coming home for the jobs that we are creating, whether they are in technology or construction or in healthcare. But I want to work with you um, in figuring out what are the best ways to train and up-train and upskill our workforce here in San Francisco and then actually connect you um, to employers that are here in San Francisco. Thank you. Uh, the fourth question is um, community. Uh, nearly 75% of all veterans in San Francisco have reported difficulties adjusting to civilian life, and 33% reported that they do not know where to go or who to contact to get help. Nearly two thirds of post 9 11 veterans indicated that civilians do not appreciate the sacrifices they've made, 
with more than 80% indicating that civilians don't understand their problems. As mayor, what will you do to help reintegrate veterans in the community? Well, I, I should first ask of the veterans that are here in the room today, how many of you come here um, to the War Memorial regularly for services and attending commission meetings? Only one, okay. Oh, oh okay. And so, Okay, I, I'm not the moderator, so I'll let Mr. Cox determine that. I, I actually started out as a community organizer for several years, and I also served at Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights before I got on the Board of Supervisors. And when I ran, um, people often told me that I would need three or four different platforms to run in the district that I run in. As I mentioned, the diversity. One morning, I would be at the St. Anthony's breakfast line, the next, line, the next morning, I would be at the Blue Bottle line, and I remember my campaign manager calling it whiplash. One day, I sing room occupancy hotel, the next day, at a condo. But through this door knocking, I actually learned something that was incredibly important which is that all of us actually want the same things. We want to live in safer neighborhoods. We all believe in affordable housing. We want a quality school in our neighborhood. But I knew I had to do a lot of work to build community in my district as well, because people didn't often identify each other with one another. And so the very first issue that I took up on the Board of Supervisors was something that was considered milk toast. It was pedestrian safety. And the reason why I took on this issue was numerous. One, more people are killed by cars and by guns here in San Francisco. And um, unlike other cities um, in our country, we actually built a lot of nice neighborhoods around our freeways. It's usually poor neighborhoods that are um, surrounding our freeways. And so when I was campaigning, I wanted to tell the one that everyone knew someone that had been hit or killed by a car collision. And that was the same in Rincon Hill and South Beach as well, because those neighborhoods are along the 80, the 101, and the 280. And so my first six years in office, I put together a monthly task force where I had our condo homeowners, our SRO tenants, our Latino and Filipino families in West Soma come together to talk about this issue, to build community um, within the district that I represent. Um, just as important as it is to provide services, we must invest in organizing. I really believe in investing in organizing. I believe that investing in organizing is what makes our neighborhood stronger and what makes our community stronger as well. Um, a lot of our um, well-to-do business interests, private sector interests, can hire lobbyists, can um, bring together councils that bring their interests together. Um, veterans, small business owners, um, those that are homeless, um, low-income and working class and middle class families don't have that as well. I believe in funding organizing, and I would love to fund organizing in our veteran community here in San Francisco. One, so we can identify more of you um, that haven't registered, um, bring you into services, connect you to the community, and build more community building engagement, which I believe not only builds those relationships of trust, but actually also eventually get people access to housing and employment as well. And also funding great nonprofit organizations that do um, this work. Uh, please join me in thanking uh, this uh, one thing that I just want to add, if elected, I want to be committed um, to meeting with our veterans here in San Francisco. And so making sure that I sit down with you to understand what you believe are the best solutions in addressing um, the questions that you brought forward today. The final thing I will just say is this. We have a huge access to justice issue in our country, meaning that we have great laws, but if you are not privileged enough to be able to hire an attorney or find access to legal services, you will not be protected by those laws at the same rate as those that have access to attorneys can. It is why I'm fighting for Proposition F, right to counsel and eviction proceedings, but I think that we need to rethink what access to justice means in our city and also what we can do to support our veterans um, with legal services as well. Thank you very much. Our next candidate is waiting in the wings. Uh, the, the 